Let's take a look at two typical ANOVA questions. First, we'll look at a simple one-way ANOVA. We know it's a simple one-way ANOVA because we just have uh, three different groups of things being measured just one way, right? So here's our measurements for the three groups. All right, with a one-way ANOVA, it's always just simply they're all the same and then at least one of them is different. That never changes. Okay, in order to run it in StatCrunch, very easily just open it in StatCrunch. Once the data loads, Stat, ANOVA, one way. You need to choose all of the columns that have data in them, right? Because sometimes you'll have other columns with other stuff. But basically, if you're comparing multiple groups, you got to choose all the groups. Um, there's extra stuff you can do that you don't need to do most of the time. You can just hit compute. And there is your test statistic. There is your p-value. Here are your degrees of freedom if you have to... Um, calculate a uh, critical value. So if you have to go to the calculator, so let's say we have to go stat calculators and we're on the F for uh, chi-square, I'm sorry, for um, ANOVA. As you can see, it's an F stats. So that means we're on the F distribution. Now let's say we wanted to calculate our, our critical value uh, for this particular set of data. And let's say we wanted uh, alpha to be 5%. Well, this means numerator uh, degrees of freedom and this is the numerator right this is the top of the fraction this is the bottom of the fraction and this is just the total so numerator would be 2 denominator would be 27 we're always doing an upper tail test uh, for ANOVAs and we put all of our alpha in that upper tail and there we go our critical value is 3.354 we can see that ours is beyond that and that's why we have a p-value of 0.0377, and we would reject at the uh, 0.05 uh, alpha level. Okay, let's look at a, a two-way ANOVA. With a two-way ANOVA, your null hypothesis is always starting with the interaction. We always have to test for an interaction first. So the null is that there is no interaction, and that the alternative is that there is an interaction. Okay, after you do that, of course, most of the time they're going to ask you to compute some stuff. So if you take a look at the data in the table, this is another giveaway that you know it's a two-way uh, ANOVA. I mean, when they talk about interaction, it's obviously a two-way. And when you have data in a table like this, it's also pretty obvious it's two-way. So again, we're going to open this in StatCrunch. Here's our data, and this is a typical problem. Uh, with our textbook and maybe the one that you're using as well. Uh, for this particular question, this top row uh, should have been the, um, the titles, right? It should have, they should have gone up here, but instead they went into the first row. Now, if we try to run stats on this, right? So we try to go to a two-way ANOVA and we want to choose um, selections or responses with variable one, it's not going to work because uh, there's a word here and it doesn't know how to deal with that. Now, maybe they've changed things and, and it will now work, but last time I tried this, uh, it didn't work at all. So let's just check it real quick and see what it does. Yeah, and it says it's no good, right? You can't, because this word, it needs nothing but numbers for responses. So all you have to do is uh, clear the words out of row one. If you want to, you could you know, retype them up here, but you just know that responses, row, and column. So now, ANOVA, back to the two-way. My responses are here, right? Rows and columns, meaning that this subject was in the target low as far as the row was concerned. If we go back here, Remember, so we have target self-esteem was either low or high, and then subject self-esteem was these three different um, variables. And so you can see that it's target low, and if we scroll down, there's the target high, right? And then we have subject low, subject medium, subject high. That was the column stuff. All right, again, plot interactions is always good to do. Compute it. 
And the first thing I like to do is click over and look at the interactions. And we see that they're crossing each other. And when they cross, we know there's interaction. And in fact, if we look at the F stat and the P value for the interaction, we see that that's a very small P value. So obviously we would reject. And remember, the null is that there is no interaction. The alternative is that there is an interaction. And we've just proven that there is an interaction, which is a bad thing because now we can't do any of the other um, stuff. So if there are multiple parts to your question, the next ones will be, okay, now test the row variable. Well, you can't test the row variable, even though according to this, the row variable has a significant value and so does the column variable. You can't test it because of the interaction. Okay, so those are um, some of the kind of snafus you have to watch out for with uh, the ANOVA is to make sure your data is properly um, formatted.